this morning. Uh, my name is Simon Soon. And um, so I'm very sort of like happy to be hosting this moment of like discussion. And I have really a panel of really great speakers. Uh, thank you so much uh, to them for sort of like agreeing to do this morning's panel discussion. Um, on my left is uh, no, uh, so I think she needs very little introduction. She is, you know, the person. We, you are, you're part of Omar's trunks, no? Uh, Mars, okay, only Mars, not Omar's trunks. Okay, right. Uh, so those of you who have been to the Malaysia Art Research, uh, uh, Malaysia Art Archive and Research Support that is located uh, a few doors away, uh, a few doors away, uh, will know that uh, she's the, one of the principal sort of like founders of this very great initiative that's been trying to uh, archive and document the history of uh, modern and contemporary art. Uh, on my right here is Yi Lan. Uh, she is a community organizer. Oh wait, so Hanim, sorry, I, I'm just quickly sort of like, you know, qualified. Hanim is also a punk. <laughs> she's also a CEO, and she's also a translator, she's also a curator, and has been sort of like doing a lot of amazing community building work all in Ipoh, right? Yeah. And on my right is Yi Lan, and oh, so she's sort of like well known enough. Uh, she runs, she's a co-founder of Kota, if you've not been to Kota Kinabalu. Uh, that's a really up and come, it's a very sort of like exciting space. It brings sort of like different people from uh, a whole sort of like range of disciplines sort of like together, from architects, designers, to artists. And it's a sort of like space that also facilitates a lot of like uh, uh, artists and curators from overseas to visit Sabah and really trying to sort of like do something exciting in Sabah. Uh, and of course she's also an artist and she is now currently working with uh, the Bajau sort of like community, women weavers in the Bajau community, a very interesting project which we hope she will share with us. And lastly on my furthest right over there is Okui Lala, uh, whose uh, video you just saw uh, just now. And uh, she's an artist, uh, her work, uh, she's also developing a new work that takes on a similar sort of format to explore like this question of sort of like uh, language and how we sort of like use languages uh, uh, for the Singapore Biennale this year, so which is going to open in November, is that right? Yeah, and she is also a lecturer at Malaysian Institute of Art. Uh, focusing on illustration, is that right? Or do you teach art in general? Illustration in general. Yeah, yeah, illustration in general. Okay, great. Uh, so, Three very powerhouse, powerhouse sort of like speakers. Um, so, uh, so where should I start? Maybe I should start by like, offering why I sort of like, chose to begin uh, our kind of discussion this morning with the screening of the love like the video, right? Um, you know, uh, as I was watching the video, um, it reminded me of a story that a friend told me about how uh, his teacher taught him how to score A1 in Bahasa. Exactly. So when you when you're asked to sort of like write a write a uh, letter, you're asked to sort of like write a letter. You know you should always begin your letter with "Salam alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh," and that's how you get it. <laughs> so there are all these sort of like strategies that people sort of like use, right? And that's how you get it. <laughs> so clearly that's why you didn't get it. <laughs> <laughs> really, you need that you yeah, are. Yeah. I'm very mad to show this one because. Yeah. yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Your standard has more of sort of it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I guess I think what, what it also sort of like shows is that it reflects the sort of like our feeling, both sort of like social realities that each of us encounter on a daily basis. And that's a benign perspective, right? You go to KK, that's another sort of like reality. You go to uh, Shangan, that's another kind of like multiple sort of like social reality. You go to Cheras, that's another sort of like multiple social reality that we have to sort of like negotiate with. Uh, and the result is that uh, sometimes it can be comical, but it's always very strategic. And sometimes it can be also very creative. Uh, and that's what I like about sort of like uh, uh, the video. And those stage, I think, uh, uh, because chances are we don't actually know all four languages. Uh, well, I certainly don't know Hokkien. Uh, uh, but I think what it captures is also a Malaysian kind of soundscape where we are comfortable with the fact that 
uh, we won't always understand the language that is sort of like around us, that's open around us. Right? Uh, and there is sort of like comfort in being comfortable with that, or coming to terms with that. Uh, and, and I think that sort of like eases into, uh, hopefully that will ease us into sort of like being comfortable about the kind of like Roja language that we might be using in this discussion. So, uh, uh, so if you free to sort of like speak in whatever languages you're comfortable with, those who don't understand to that, uh, we will try to sort of like translate, or sort of like sort of like translate, uh, but uh, the idea is that sort of like encourages us to use languages that we're and have some familiarity with. Okay. Um, uh, have, uh, that said, uh, so the, the I titled this uh, discussion art makes art that makes Malaysia in a way as a kind of like rip off the documentary that I actually never seen from 1967 or 1968 by Said Aoi. Uh, that's titled Madeka Makes Art, and this. Uh, was also a title that was used by T.K. Sabatati in his essay in this uh, seminal exhibition from 1994 uh, where he wrote an essay called um, Malika Makes Art or Does It? Um, and uh, for sort of like, you know, someone like Sai Aoi, I think his interest is that how did this movement of Malika then sort of like spur the growth in, say, modern art in Malaysia, right? Um, but I thought that, unlike Sai Aoi, I think, uh, who thinks that the historic moments first the growth of the art, what do we consider actually art as being sort of like actively producing that kind of like Malaysian narratives or, 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 or Malaysian sort of like stories uh, uh, rather than something that follows from Malaysia that are essential to the sort of like shaping of that Malaysian sort of like story. And I hope that our speakers today are able to sort of like that. Oh, let's reflect on it. Man. Yeah? Okay. Uh, but I don't know where to sort of like begin. I know it's a big, 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 big sort of like question. Um, but maybe we can begin from another center, far, far, far away from KL, uh, where Yilan has been sort of like doing amazing sort of like work uh, within a um, like community of sort of like weavers and trying to address this sort of like. Uh, also trying to sort of like uh, understand uh, that though we might think of the term Malaysia as being inclusive, sometimes it can also be like exclusive, right? And when that happens, artists and artists come in and do something or say something. And what are you saying? Hi everyone. Um, thanks to the Rogue Art team and Simon for having me here today. Um, okay, a little bit about Kota K first. This is a space that I co-founded with two others. Uh, uh, Filza Jamjam from Kedah, she's uh, from this side. She's married to a, a local Sabahan. And Phyllis Chin, um, who comes from the neighborhood where the studio is located. And her father was a photographer as well, and very well known in that community, which is Tanjung Aru, and it was also a uh, water village. So, uh, and because her father was a photographer and, and they've lived there um, in Phyllis in her 40s, her entire life, then I kind of like that we have her and her father's link to the suburb. But both Philza and Phyllis are both architects and I'm the artist. And we uh, run public programming as, very, as well as very small programming and we do a lot of uh, um, if we just invite people to hang out. We have Friday after work drinks every Friday, uh, unless all three of us are not in town. Um, and people, all kinds of people gather, whether they're environmental activists or artists or fellow architects or artists, whomever. We, we never quite know who's going to come. So that's one of the main things that Kota K does. Um, I moved back about three years ago. The studio's uh, two years old in November. Um, but I spend a lot of time outside of KK, so I've been working in Kuala Omadal, which is in the Sulu Sea near Samporna, uh, with uh, Bajau Samadalao community, namely women, uh, all women, um, and also in Keningau with the Dusun Moro community, which is deep inland. And um, in a way, uh, because I call this frown my climb valley, this is my client 
discover. Um, but I left at the time just before the last election when I was so frustrated and I, and I was not relating to KL slash Malaysia. And I always felt, I always felt that I had a finger on this country and I knew this country. But there was a period just before the election where I physically got really sick. I was ill, um, like really ill. And it was, I had become toxic and I was reflecting, I think, the toxicity that I felt around me. So when I literally ran back home, it was a running away. And then what I realized as I was running away, was I was just, I was enforcing these ideas of words like Medeka that I don't really relate to, because we, we don't relate to Medeka at all, 1957 Medeka has nothing to do with two thirds of Malaysia. Right? And then there's this, this constant um, propagandic talk about being Malaysia that I just couldn't relate to anymore. And I always that I thought that, I always think that I'm like, Believe I'm about being Malaysian because I'm the one that's always, you know, including all parts of Malaysia. You know, people say, "Oh, you're just promoting Sabah." I say, "You don't get it. I'm actually promoting Malaysia because I'm being inclusive of all the various parts. It's those that do not think of the others who are being ultra Malayan, let's say. So we come from a very different perspective on that side. But what happened when I was working with these communities was I forgot all of that and it was no longer important at all. And what became really important was what was in front of me and the extreme local. And so I've been obsessed by local and the locals communicating to each other. So the weaving project I ended up doing, am I taking too much time? Um, it, it, it just, it's, dry, it's been driving all my work for the last few years. So I apologize if I'm for both. I'm in KL and I'm excited to be here. Um, uh, so I discovered the tika, and it was personal because then I realized what I was looking for was a mat. I wanted a tika where I can be with the people that I want to trauma with on a tika. And I lost my tika, you know, and I felt such loss. And having a tika, I didn't lose it. I felt like it was taken away from me somehow, and it was a great sense of loss. So the tika to me, became, I became obsessed by the tika, and I share a space with two architects. Suddenly the tika to me became an architectural space. It became a platform or a stage where people are invited to commune. So either you have a drama for a wedding, or you have a ritual that is performed on, upon this space, or it's a domestic space where you usually more than one person is sleeping on the, there's five kids sleeping on the tika. Or it's a workspace where you, you uh, have your dried fish or your chili. Or, but it was this site that was signified, it was not a sacred object, but it was a site that became signified by whatever gathering was being invited to uh, uh, happen on that architectural configuration, if you like. And to me, Sabah can only become whole, not even dealing with Malaysia, but Sabah, when uh, these two large demographics of people come together and share a tikka, Sabah being a tikka. So then the sea-based, I work, start working with people who make tikka, the weavers. So I was working with the, the Samadala weaving. The tikka is called a tepo in uh, uh, Samadala language. Uncle Raja. And then, uh, so, uh, yeah, so I was, I'm talking about the work I'm doing in summer. And so, they, so then I started working with this community who also happened to be stateless. So when you talk about the nation state, they have no paper identity. They're not Malaysian, they're not Filipino, they're not Indonesian. They're a, they're a community of people, a millennia old. They live on boats, they're nomadic, they are true Southeast Asians in my mind, right? And so working with them, fantastic, them weaving, and then working with the inland weavers, so it's Tana Dan Aero, Jadi Tana So that, that's the basic principle behind the work that I'm doing.
Okay. Thank That's you. a long story, but that's the point. Thank you. Thanks for sharing, Han. Uh, and Hanen, you have been weaving your own sort of like tikats, right? Over the years, since, uh, you know, I, I, I recall at least with uh, Muma YKP, or uh, with the Yayasan at first, where you organized a number of sort of like festivals, and you've written so many sort of like really interesting essays on sort of like, you know, different cultural phenomena uh, 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 from the 90s to the 2000. I don't know if you still continue to write, but then you sort of like shifted gears to do more sort of like curatorial work. Uh, and yeah, uh, finally, of course, setting up Mars, right? Which is such a sort of like important institution here that's archiving our sort of like Malaysia history. So, um, can you sort of like share with us a bit more about what's motivating you and uh, why, why are you reading all these sort of like the guys? <laughs> Thank you, Simon, and good morning, everyone. Uh, so basically, well, maybe my tikka is a little, little bit kecil from uh, Eli lah. Eli lah, sampu dunia ni. So maybe uh, I'll, I'll talk a little bit about the Roman YKP thing. So it was actually uh, created, or accidentally created sebenarnya daripada Yayasan Kesenian Perak yang besar uh, and then suddenly because of political intervention and what not uh, we didn't get uh, enough funding and support from the government then lah in Perak so we decided to create Rumah YKP so it was a little bungalow in one of the residential area and I thought that you know it was a blessing in disguise because I had the freedom to determine whatever I wanted to do then rather than getting instructions from the vegan. So, and masa tu kita telah uh, connect dengan a lot more interesting uh, people uh, especially from the the IYC scene. We got Joe to uh, talk about his bug attitude then. Uh, we did a sm uh, small talk sessions uh, on a monthly basis or twice a month, uh, we call that Gebang Seni. So to from there onwards, uh, kita actually our main intention was to make the arts more accessible. And so we created a lot of uh, talk programs to bring people from different uh, arts background. Not only visual arts, but also. We got the writers, poets, foreign film like Yue came over uh, and basically kita just to share so I think it's important to create that uh, platform to you know on a constant uh, basis apa ni kena share out because when you get uh, pandangan or views from different uh, people of different backgrounds I think it will uh, enlarge your understanding about your world. Uh, then um, it will, of course, by the uh, input, you know, be uh, fresh, uh, fresher, rather than you just stick within your own community. So, you have an example, uh, one specific example, how do you shift? Yeah, because I mix around with all sorts of people, not only the art people uh, because dengan theater pun saya join I was like the secretary for this majlis theater Perak for like 8 years dealing with different sets of people bukan contemporary artists uh, dan dia telah membuka cara saya nak how to negotiate, how to handle things and saya rasa it, 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 it helped me a lot lah. uh, and even, even dengan golongan Sastra, kan kita kenal dengan penulis yang 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 lebih yang senior uh, orang tengah dan budak-budak muda lagi. Uh, so saya rasa uh, that is one of the things that we we have to look into lah. Uh, kita punya rapport dengan uh, kelompok yang berbagai. And I I really uh, enjoy your uh, talk just now. You're sharing Ilan, whereby you said you you communicated a lot now with the more local people, and uh, and I think the punya level tu mungkin lain daripada what what we we have been doing in the contemporary art world. 
but I think in more years and I think you you gain much more. Uh, I think macam macam benda lah actually lah daripada ideologi dia, daripada praktis dia, uh, and I guess we have to break that uh, dichotomy of the apa contemporary art thing and local art. So now it's interesting. It's about for six months now I have been appointed lah. I have been working at this new place called Port. Eh? It's actually a GLC under the Perak State Government. Tapi dia punya branding tu Port People of Remarkable Talent. Kodon ya lah. <laughs> so I have to layan segala mak nenek, you know. Segala benda, not just art ni. Eh? Art ni actually they don't really, they tak berapa fokus. They are more into like craft tangan, bila ada acara besar, okay you go send people to dance, to open your, it's like pop-up stores, call the vendors, apa semua kan. Mula-mula uh, I was like, suffocated also. I said, what am I doing here? <laughs> I think my neck under a guillotine, <laughs> macam tu kan. But after a while, after three months, I think I got, uh, the, I kind of enjoy it right now because I have to layan all this biasa punya people um, yang some of them are very talented in fact and they want tak dapat due ni lah exposure so uh, it's good that uh, bila kita buat uh, programs we are able to lure them in to participate for instance just about two months ago uh, we got connected with the orang asli group uh, of the not uh, semai, semai, semai group kan dan dia dah bring in the whole group untuk participate in most of our small small programs uh, and and saya rasa benda ni penting because um, when when we talk to this person the president of the persatuan dia kata dia malu uh, dia selalu lagu dekat port tapi dia segan untuk masuk because they feel the superiority complex punya ni kan so I said, why? Well, uh, you are just uh, as good as uh, the others can. So and and um, itulah. Saya rasa uh, I'm uh, saya sedang melalui satu fasa yang mana ilang lalui juga, which is to connect and uh, to you know, cairkan diri, to liquidize ourselves into this very uh, this reality lah. Uh, dan sebab itu saya rasa um, ya yeah, saya tak tahu nak cakap apa lagi but, but I, this is what I do right now and I'm, I'm enjoying it uh, at, and at the same time I think uh, kita tak boleh terus forget what we do because we need important people like Dr. Simon to also you know give his uh, share his ideas and to you know, bring people together basically to understand each other. Like okay, like Lala punya video tadi kan? It's like very diverse, but we are actually sitting in the same and breathing the same oxygen, and we need to be together lah in order to understand one another. I might be my talk. Yeah, masih ada waktu untuk belajar lah, Pak Menjun. Oh, stop it. Bicara sama. <laughs> yeah, but and, and, yeah, I like the fact that it's really sort of like people outside of KL that's really driving. Uh, uh, there's so much energy outside of KL, right? And I wonder if uh, Okui now you want to sort of like share a bit about what's happening with Penang Uh I guess it's, uh, I know it's a lively scene, we just collaborated and put together. And, uh, for me, what was for me a very meaningful symposium, a one day symposium that uh, Okui and the fantastic sort of like colleagues in Penang you know, managed to put together. Uh, I just sort of like came in and uh, did it, yeah. I gave my input, but, uh, uh, but I think that itself is indicative of uh, a kind of like, you know, momentum in Penang, right? Uh, you want to sort of like share a bit about how you're, and you're not native of Penang, you're from Kelantan. No, I'm half Penang. Penang, yeah. My father is Penang. Ah, okay. Okay, okay, okay. Um, so, uh, it's interesting because recently I moved to KL back um, but I, I graduated from MMU, Savajaya in 2013 and then worked in KL one year and then I moved back to Penang. So I think in 2013, Penang was quite interesting with Georgetown Festival and also functioning with Ran Hamo and uh, there's a lot of friends like Chani just graduated from um, Taiwan. 
So there's a lot of the artist community there and also the street art community there. It was growing that time. So to me that time, um, going back to Penang after working in KL for one year, it was like, wow, so diverse. Everyone is from diverse background. And uh, this course of practice is also from like either from England come back or Taiwan or local train or self talk So it was a bit, um, a lot of language was mixed as well and also um, discussion as well. And I think in, in Penang, my impression that time was uh, street art and also culture and heritage is very uh, dominant, <laughs> if I can use that word. So even when I work freelance in Penang, my projects are usually uh, with uh, ASET or Georgetown World Heritage. So it's also meeting um, local communities. And I think this, this I did this work in 2017. And um, I realized um, when working in Georgetown, you need to speak a lot of language to communicate. Um, and even even doing projects in, um, for example, one of the projects I did with uh, Jenny, uh, she did for the Re-Engage People's Club under Japan Foundation Leadership Project. Um, it was actually my first culture shop in my own hometown because it's in a Cantonese, um, that, that area is like predominantly speaking in Cantonese and I don't speak good Cantonese. And I, I realized, oh, even the idea, um, even, even among Chinese Chinese, there's even a lot of gaps as well um, between different generations and different ideas of it. So it was my first, like, um, like I, I think, thinking back that time, I was like, um, I was questioning myself whether what I learned or what my practice is actually relevant with the local context. So it was a quite a nice learning turning point for me that time. Mm. And because like we put what what that project is, we put our artwork inside uh, Deepest Court, a uh, local residential area there, um, and people just there's a gap. It's different from putting in a, in in a in a gallery. Um, like uncle might just ask you, I don't understand what you're talking about. What are you trying to say? They will ask you a very direct question, mm. and and it was a point to think that oh, what I do, who is my audience, and what I do, does it. It, it, does it resonate? Does it, yeah. Mm. I think that's a really nice topic to sort of like bring us back all the way to sort of like KL, right? Where Balai Sani Lucas Nagari used to play like a very central role as a, a, a magnetic sort of like hub that attracts people uh, to a center, you know? Uh, and Uncle Raja here used to be uh, uh, one of the chief mediators. And the chief sort of like communicator <laughs> almost. As a gallery assistant, you have to sort of like meet the public. And you have to uh, so, <laughs> And you're wearing a license. <laughs> uh, do you want to sort of like reflect a bit on your time there? You've worked there for over 30 years. And, uh, and then also, maybe two things reflect on uh, uh, your time working in Balai. But also, given that now you've heard so many stories about activities happening in different parts of sort of like Malaysia. What do you think? What do you think could be Balai sort of like role today? Uh, uh, given that it's chaos no longer so seen as like the main, it's not necessarily the only hub, right? It's not the only place where artists can uh, can survive, make work, and have a community. Uh, artists are going uh, out to places in different states. So maybe, yeah, first is to sort of like reflect on experience in Balai as a sort of like facilitator and between the public and, uh, and the art that's shown in Balai. And second is like, what is the role of Balai today? Good morning. Uh, yeah. Hello. Selamat pagi. Morning. I'll start from the beginning of I began to work in this art gallery. It was when I went to my uncle's house. My neighbor, the uncle's neighbor was a former director, Sulaiman Osman. And he was telling, talking to my uncle and saying that there's a vacancy in my place. It's a local I mean, undergrad staff work. And she is a colleague attendant, and I was there. And he asked uh, my uncle, "Do you need to work with Abang?" He called me. He called uh, Suleiman Abang. So I said, "No, for me, no problem. 
And then uh, Suleiman asked me a few questions. It's not a quick question, it's like talking. But actually, it was driving it. I mean, I'm interested, interested or not in a sense. I say, I say everything, whatever he asks, I say I'm willing to work. And in the, in the second thing, he asked, if you're willing to wear Malay costume or not? I say, okay, I need a work at the time. You see, I told him that. And then the, the day, the following, the following day, I went back home. I talked to my father that the, the abang next door to my uncle's house he said that there was an opportunity for, and he said he must wear a costume, Malay costume. And my uncle said, don't worry, I can wear it's part of our culture too. So that was my father told me. He's no, he's not now here. Yeah. And the next day I went to the next market, that is 17 October, 1977. I went, I met Raja Harlem, he's a pure office boy, and then he took me to the, the officer Jamali. And Jamali said, eh, okay, come back. Jack Sulaiman sudah bagi tahu, oh, nak datang. And he asked me to sit and he started to question me. Simple question, can you work, can you wear MLA team? And people, you sort of guide. You have to cut, and it's like pemandu pelancong lah. Some of these students, and I said okay, and I told I need a permit also because I'm jobless now. Then I said you can start from the first of November. No? Okay, I said I say okay, everything go quick, everything okay. <laughs> then on the first of November, I started working. There was a exhibition going on. I think it's a party exhibition. I'm not sure what. Then. Then after that, the exhibition over, we started with a, now a ceramic exhibition. That was my first exhibition, which we are preparing for that exhibition. That was I mean, Kuang Ceramic. I think you all know. So I started with when, when we are preparing, so we are bringing down all the paintings, batik painting. There's one I Awen mean, Kuang's work broke by my. I instantly, I never know, I don't because one of the four, they start, they start the uh, uh, pottery in pool, bro. Ah, Carlos, that is, it was, I think, a third or fourth day. I was so scared and said, Alama, my ego is coming off. <laughs> and then, Chit Suleiman came down and said, hey, don't worry, I'll talk to Awing Kuang, we'll settle the work. And I think Awing Kuang also was very good, they accepted. And they, they even, I don't think they even has, um, accepted any payment for that. Uh, at that time, we were very close with this art gallery, most of the artists. So from that, I began to work with, I mean, the so-called my colleagues, work for my first mentors was uh, Pachi Alias, Pachi Hamid, Abang Rosli. These are the three persons who are working as, as an attendant. Uh, my, uh, my jawatan was attendant at the time. But, but Jamali told me, it is, we call it attendant, but your work is as a gallery assistant. So I said, okay, we are good. And then this Pachi taught me a lot how to handle the painting, how to see the painting. Not only he and Mr. Malik, very close. He will come down, because I knew he will come down and advise. If there is any problem, come and see me. He all the while, Tell us how to look at the painting. We don't simply say, look at the painting. If you see, you can't know anything. You look at the painting. Uh, he told me that. And I started to learn from there, big by. By then, then they are, I started to introduce artists. I think the first artist was, there's two. One is uh, Ethan Ling, and the other one is Pia Dasa. <laughs> I met him in the office. And then after that, that was Sayama Dharma. Call him for one side of the man. And then uh, uh, Smile Zin. And, and then uh, my director was uh, Maira Mazuki at the time. The director was Simon Osman. Jamali was the officer in charge of everything. And now uh, A to Z from accounting, from preparing everything. And there's uh, one, Abang uh, Saman, also a uh, clerical worker. And, Raja Halim was the boy there. Then Papuna was I and my 
with her colleagues. So nine of us was there, only nine. In former, uh, former Dewan Tumpu Abraman. Those days we call Dewan Tumpu Abraman, not Matic. You know, so, Dewan Tumpu Abraman uh, started work. And from there, we started to wear. Then after some time, Sharifah Fatima came in. And, and we learned from her lot how to prepare the exhibition. Uh, because art is different from other uh, art exhibitions, different from other exhibitions. So it is very unique. Even at the time, the chairman of Tantri Kamarulari film, whenever he comes, he is very close to us. He comes and talk to us, he sits beside us. I, it, it's uh, something like, to, for me, it's uh, like golden era at those days. Because they never see me as a undergrad star or up from a different uh, part or different days. We are very close, like brothers and uh, like a family. You can call us a family. They know secret from us. And this Pachi Hami, this Pachi Halia is an old time. Uh, he can see a painting and tell what is wrong with the painting. So I learned from him. And this other Pachi Hami, and then uh, uh, Rose Wills was good in uh, arranging, I mean, preparing the, all the artworks uh, to, for the, I mean, things that we need for artworks and especially he knows what to do, how to act, arrange everything. He said, that time, I don't know how, to, well, they were all not, uh, I mean, they are not academic yet. The most of them was standard six, when we were at that top three. Uh, well, now, uh, and Machi, alias, I don't know what, right? but he was a poly, former police man. And they said, but they learned a lot, I learned from that more than that. Well, they taught me, everyone taught me. And plus, with the artists, they are very good. Yujili, Piyadasa, Sainamajama, Ismailzi, and I, I won't forget uh, this. Uh, he can sing. To others, I don't know how they say they are very garang. But to me, he was very good. I, I don't know how to talk to him. And he even taught me, even when he was hanging his painting in the you know, nylon, all because of something, you will just step. You must see from this angle, then only you can see. Uh, How, uh, what about today's contact? Wait, uh, <laughs> give me a yeah. moment. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my, my living in okay. my life. <laughs> so from there, we moved to Majestic. But very sad thing happened in Majestic. I think in the 90s. That was Hussein Nas painting. Got stolen. Got stolen. Until now, till today, I still live. Thing about this painting. That is my The only that is my uh, And it was very fine. Even his mother, his mother, his when he heard about that. I was told by my colleagues that Hussein Nas cried when he heard about the his painting was lost. And I was working at that, that day. When we, uh, for that evening, when we close the balai and we balik to balai rumah, everything is okay. Before that, I we recorded in the book, everything is okay. The next morning, about 9.40, it should be my holiday because my off day is on Thursday. I think because we were, uh, that day, we were doing some renovation at the top. <coughs> so when we came, when we open on and switch on the light, we saw something is missing, something is different because the frame is there, the painting is not there. <laughs> <laughs> but still, I am not sure of the But I still remember there was, and then the card was there. And then uh, I and my colleagues, we called our officers, all came down. Sharifah Fatima also came down, Wada also came down. Everyone was very sad. And then eventually we uh, made a police report, the police came, they took all the reports, uh, they saw uh, question everyone. One was stuff from the top, from the director to the, uh, the staff, the uh, attendant, I mean the assistant of the gallery. And then uh, that was a big incident that I cannot forget, it's a very sad thing. 
until till now today we couldn't find I mean we couldn't get back this work and don't know where is it is now. Even I think whenever I go around, can I see the this painting somewhere around? I just call the police. I think this. And from there, there a lot of incident and from there we shifted to present art gallery. There was a, and then they had a, a first commonwealth painting exhibition in that gallery where Queen Elizabeth visited. If I'm not mistaken, Queen Elizabeth visited. Yeah. And then and the, the big exhibition when was there, it was in Majestic, Rochambeau Process Exhibition, the biggest exhibition, where that time of budget was very small. And we have to ticket for that painting, especially for that exhibition. I think two ringgit, but the crowd came, big crowd. Who we get here, we accept it. From there, I learned something. It's not that we cannot put atom fees, but this at this time is 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 not easy. It might take some time, but we must work up. We can put in an atom fees, so we must get to the people. They are two group. One is the artist, one is the art lover, the other is the art collector. It's three three group. We must get them involved. Then we can make the public understand from our local, not local, but our local public understand what is art, why art is so important. People, I think most of our local doesn't understand what is art and not. They know when they see artists, they think of actors, singers, and this at this group, but they don't think of this. Well, I met a foreigner in Indonesia, I'm mistaken. They say, they say, when they send, say, sending money, they go to uh, the, For them, rupees or sending one, I did this, our, our, they go to the painters. They won't think of other kind of artists. But our, in our, when, whenever we call uh, artists, they won't think of our artists. They don't think of the old singer. So, before they change the attitude, we must come forward. I think uh, my request to the artist, the artist must come forward. Doesn't, don't think of what, uh, what kind, what characters are, are our friends or others or anyone, even the gallery of the staff. You might don't, you might not be interested in some of the stuff or you don't like because of the. Uh, Attraction eh? because you're, they are not welcoming or whatever it is. But you must go there. Uh, you are not going for the staff. You are not going for the people, the family, the people who are working there. Going for the National Art Gallery. This is very important because uh, art gallery is there because of the artist. So you don't have the artist, then, 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 then no point of having that. So the artist must also come forward. Then he can get. Uh, advice to the National Art Gallery or the staff what you need. If you separate from them, I mean, you don't know, you don't know why. It's a minimized group is coming of the, of the, the artist group, just minimum. So the voice is not strong. If okay, every artist come, then the voice will be very strong. And then, then people also look on, the art will also look on, but they will support you. The collectors will support artists. And from there, from then, when going uh, and, uh, and there was a Lizzie Pay exhibition in our National Art Gallery at the present uh, place. It was a big attraction. So they got a group. Who group the group that managed to bring the public to all over the, from all over the country. That's not only problem. So like I mean uh, National Art Galleries also have to work. They must not think of Kuala Lumpur. They must do all over the country. Or the, 
from from the the other end from the Sarawak Sabah to to the Kedah Perlis. They must come forward. If there, there is there any program, they must have at least a travelling program. Especially exhibition is very important. I think exhibition to make them you know, let the public from the other place come and see. So we must have travelling exhibition, but hopefully they have. I don't know now it's still going on or not, but still they must have a travelling exhibition. Plus invite the other side of people to participate in particular exhibition. Bring some of the uh, artists who are there and some are very shy, very shy to come forward. I when I was uh, working, when I was traveling, I met uh, some of some of these people in Baha who are an alliance, the good artists. They're very shy to come forward. They're good artists. I don't know why. It's only because the attraction is not We are not doing work. We are not making it come home because we are still young. Maybe we say we are independent of only 60 years, but I think we are still young. To Nimrod, in many parts. So we must go to the people, I mean, like, say, like, parents of both children. Bring them forward. More, go them more forward, more advanced. Then, I, after that, there were an exhibition, a big exhibition. And then from then, I clocked at the 4th of October of 19. 12, 2014. I'm sorry, the book. You mistakenly mentioned the 31st. It was 4th. Oh, I mean, uh, oh, okay. 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 Oh, but it is like uh, in, in, in form that they can pick it. And the company wants a question or not? What was your question at that time? Oh, you are yeah, yeah. talking about relations, yeah. No, no, See, no. relations are uh, simple as that. Like, no happy, uh, yeah. Iran, and Kuwait, yeah. and even yeah. 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 me, Iran. Yeah. So we are now here. So we became close to them because of art. Because of art. So how you are bringing, going to bring it, going to bring the people to the So what Ilan is doing, what Ani is doing, what she is doing, and what? I think not only there, they must have another big group going for the for the it might for beginning. Then after that you don't need a group. But now you need a group, not really necessarily, apart from necessarily they should be a group, just like doing it. To relate the public, the public must without the public's help, without the public knowing, without the public loving, we not either either believe what happen. No one. You can have anything, a big big gallery, big museum. Hello, orang awam tak tahu tak tahu tentang seni seni lukis. Ah, tak apa mana seni apa seni boleh buat. Apa, apa kepentingan kalau ni seni? Kalau they, they don't know, no point. You can have what you want. The public must know. Because public is the one who pulling the money. See, we, most of the time when I was in the gallery, when the artists come, I'll go forward, talk to them. The people, the public come, I pull forward to them. And, and even collectors. The others will surprise when can happen if you want to collect and sit together and just sit chat like brothers, Abang Ali, Abang Kaka, more artists. And most of them artists are the young artists who are here, Raja. Mana Kaka Awa? They will ask, why not? Mana Kaka Awa? This is not there. See, it's this kind of relationship you must start. What I'm saying, we are not going to be related to that, but informal we must do this kind of. And I think that usually they might say, "Wow, no." Even you start to talk with them, you know what is their feeling. Fear that some people say it doesn't all the way to one time. It's not that way. But still, he comes. He still comes to the gallery and talk to the officers. That is his work as an artist, as an art lecturer, an art art historian. 
after he did his work, he had to keep on doing do this. Without that, then everyone will go on sleeping. So everyone have a uh, have a reason to play, have to work. Everyone have their own part of the work. Artists have their own part. Lecturers, you know, history have their own part. Just go to the my officers. Those day officers they did, and present day officers must also do. They are doing work, but still they must go more, more forward. You must be friendly everywhere, Marco. So we must get in touch with everyone. See, those days whenever I go outside, I don't know these people. People, I'll just talk to them. I'm looking at some gallery. Why not come and visit? They are free. It's free. No need to pay. You come and visit. When you go to school, friend, I go to school. Sometimes I go to the government department. Whenever I go, I just tell them, come to a gallery. There's one also one thing. Mobat National Gallery. They must contact every government department. They must send every government department poster of all exhibition. And then they must individually send an officer. They can be ordinary officer. Just send all the posters. And first must do first must interact the government department officers. But uh, we were spent by the public money. Government we are under the government. So why not go to the government office? Every government department. I, what I do sometimes, I cycle down. This, like, and these officers know me. Eh, you see? Just because we show our face, they get us. So, uh, you know, those days, uh, our EPF office was here. I think still there. I used to go there. I just see, pass the process, small process. Dan kata ada senang datang lah Percuma ha? This thing they can do You no need to go and talk to them Ask them can you post a face or forces or not Balai person Even maybe at beginning they won't talk But later part Whenever they keep on seeing the posters Every time they are inviting they are not going uh, Then they go And at the same time also must make uh, The person in charge Ketua jabatan, ketua jabatan. They are having gallery, they are spending, government is spending a lot of money. They come, just give us support. Talk to them. So that's why these three groups must be. And I request to the artists again don't forget the national gallery. Not, it doesn't belong to a certain group. And it doesn't belong to only the staff, I mean, the officers who are working there. It belongs to every artist, it belongs to all the, our. Belong to our nation, so just come on. If you don't come, the Pemina, Pemina own down, the public own down, and then the collector will forget. So, please, I think you, can, you still can just dial, let this information go to the other artists, especially art college. You can see most of them are from art college, from art students. So, you still can contact your. Your lecturers bring this art student to call it like what am I am I and I can do before. even now I think they are students they'll bring two lecturers mm -hmm. and they, these two instead I cannot forget and also get Kelsey Kelsey they come no no am I Oh yeah, from Nancy Kelsey also. Uh, now she's a And the, the group, I think, if I'm not mistaken, from the group from ITM, MIA still coming. They don't they come because the lecturers say to you must go to National Art Gallery. See, that is very important. I think the, uh, those are from the art college before, just tell them, tell your lecturers before to bring. That is how we pull crowd. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I think that's such a good reminder no? to actually take ownership of our life because it is a public institution. We forget it's not actually some black run by whichever sort of officer is that. Sure, that's managed by them, but really it's our sort of like space. Okay. And, and a number of you have also always sort of like continued to. Uh, 80 something, yeah? Don't be. <laughs> <laughs>
dia akan terus berkembang kan and sometimes it gets like jadi besar and if you terus pergi deal dengan orang dalam tu sebenarnya ok I tak ada bonit tu siapa ya <laughs> but I, I, that's my style of working walaupun orang cakap orang tu buruk ke walaupun I, I think I have to try myself you know, I don't just listen to people Really, you know all the while blaming, blaming, but, but he, last, he will be there. Yeah. Every time he'll be there. Yeah, he have to comment. Yeah. He have to comment. But Sulaiman, Sulaiman, uh, I like him because he doesn't care who you are. Uh, and then the next, the next day you can see him at the national assembly. Okay. So that is what we want. I think that uh, the good, it's a really good reminder that if you want to criticize, you also must engage. Yes. Ultimately, you cannot just sort of like, you know, say something and then retreat into your own little sort of like home. Mm-hmm. Provide the solution. Uh, provide the solution. Yeah. Uh, but is it true that then, um, that the public today, today still do not sort of like understand art? Also, given the fact that art has changed so much, right? Now you have, you know, you cook a, you, you cook a I don't know, a dish of curry, in a gallery, and that's art. You can sort of like bring people together, and that's a kind of like artwork already. Uh, and there are all these sort of like other sort of like interesting kinds of like practices, and you know, working with sort of like uh, weavers from sort of like the Banyak community. This is a sort of form of art project. In a way, the language of art has really sort of changed so much. So, do you think that that has sort of like allowed us to build a bigger sort of like art, engage with a bigger art public, or do you feel like? You know, is it is it true that uh, you know when we complain that the public still does not really quite get up? Uh, it's actually an accurate reflection of what's happening on the ground. is in the realm of a public's mindset um, and whether they call it art or budaya or adat or there's many there's many descriptions of what might be seni or rang seni manto is also a very wide uh, description so sometimes I think if you're talking specifically about the contemporary art world it puts all kinds of um, elitist gatekeeping um, it, it boxes up itself sometimes when sometimes the public actually is really onto something and they, there's a, a, a very deep knowledge ilmu, tentang waris or whatever it is that they're exercising in real life and it's, it's right there in front of us we're just maybe not calling it art and making a name card for it but that doesn't necessarily mean that the language that we we use in the art world or the concepts or the theories are not in practice in many publics uh, sometimes i think it's the art world that is ignorant and arrogant and uh, closes itself to what the public is actually doing and what is important to the public so I'm, I'm very wary about giving importance, um, in a sense, to art, uh, but putting more emphasis on, um, uh, at, at least now, with the new me, um, on, on uh, listening to what, and, and looking and being more open to what is, is happening in the, the locals and in the publics, a plural sense, both. Um, yeah, so, so when you see yourself as a bridge builder, yes. or are you a I, I see my entire life as the orang bergangkang. I'm always bergangkang, always. My entire life is bergangkang. And so I bergangkang. I bergangkang uh, antara dunia. Antara <laughs> geography. <laughs> 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 you know. yeah, um, so yeah, uh, in a way, that's, that's my job, is to help bergangkang. Sometimes it's to 
to, 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 to get really angry with the art world for being such snobs. Um, what do you mean? And not here. Because I've got your leg, one here, one there. Oh, okay. Yeah, i got one <laughs> leg in East Malaysia, one in the West. Yeah, one in the East, the girl, one in the West. The one. Yeah, Bukanka, my whole life, Bukanka. Jangan <laughs> jatuh. Um, yeah, so that's, that's uh, I, I'm very wary of being judgmental towards the public. Yeah, because to me, the, the street, the public, do not underestimate the street, do not underestimate the public. Uh, yeah, and, and, and when you put art too much on a pedestal, then you become, you, you, you're, you're separating yourself. Yeah. So I'm not into that separation. Hello. Uh, I think the public will know if it's given more time to be explained. For example, my, uh, my dad, um, he still doesn't see what I do with art, but sometimes I, I, I enjoy it. Uh -huh. he, he, so he will like go and find function and say, I don't know what my daughter is doing. <laughs> it's not art. Um, but then it given some time to talk with my parents, um, because they are they, they don't know about art. But I find that the conversation interesting on their idea of art. What is it? When you explain then maybe they sort of get it, like okay, she's talking about identity and, and they join uh, my work. Um, but also um, thing that is important to discuss what is Malaysian art or Malaysian contemporary art. Uh, for example, I think I came across the first uh, Narrative in Malaysia book in 2012 or 2010. I'm not promoting, <laughs> yeah, I'm sort of promoting that book. So that time I was a uh, fresh grad, I, I don't know where to refer to. So reading through that, it gave me an idea like, oh, okay, uh, this is our history. I think it's important to look back at the history. So you actually, as a student, you read the book. You yeah. Actually, yeah. Yeah. Actually, yeah. Wow, okay. And 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 because I, I don't know where to refer to sometimes because uh, usually I think like contemporary art or art um, if we just Google everything come out in English and in this or, or more towards the Western world. So I'm also curious what happened in Southeast Asia, and Malaysia. I think the book helped also and also joining in discussion different groups of discussion. I think when I did that work, uh, my language proficiency, I realized that joining different group of language group of, uh, for example, going to a Chinese speaking, Mandarin speaking, um, this art, art discussion is very different as well. Uh, the context and the thing that they're talking about and joining in like a Malay medium speaking is also very different as well. So I I I think this two years has quite a lot of round table discussion going on around um, um, about what is Malaysian art and everything. I think. Uh, yeah, for me, um, I think this sort of book, history book, helps to position ourselves and also for the public to understand. Because remember, like going to like, high school gathering, my friend would ask, "So what are you doing?" Then, then they would ask, "So where, where do I start?" Uh, then they say, "Is there any book I could read or any articles I could read?" I think, I think newspaper media helps also for an entry point. Mm -hmm. Is that? Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, Okay, uh, so, you know, uh, feel free to sort of like join in the conversation. Uh, I don't want to just to sort of like make it about us, but if you have sort of like something to contribute. Sorry? Yes, I am opening up to the floor. Uh, why do you have something to add? Uh, Sylvia. Oh, I had a homework now. Oh, okay. <laughs> you want to get in your thoughts first? Sorry, I'm not young anymore. <laughs>
It's not, it's not only speaking Chinese dialect. You must start the Anglos. We are a dying breed. We are born in the colonial times. You know, we eat, sleep, dream, have nightmares, all in English. So um, we are must start in a narrative. But um, it's good to introduce yourself, at least we know what the new generation is about. Yes, I'm sure you have a lot of uh, things to share with us. Yang saya mencakap dari sini public appreciation and reception of art. Ha. Kalau kita tengok ini, few months back uh, dalam FB viral pasal pencapulan seni di BMS Balai Seni Negeri Negara. Dan nanti pencapulannya tentang yang 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 tentang Suzy Suleiman, those people that uh, they were saying, I mean, part of what they, part of what uh, Tok Kura told me is that basically the fault is not so much with the public, mm. but the artist and the mm. So because as we said that, I mean, it's good that uh, Bapa uh, to the Mubah people orang lah datang balai during that period. Not that they were watching this uh, Luna Lu thing lah. But the, uh, apa ni? Kesalahan mana in the in the Facebook kan? People blame the public. Hmm. It's uncultured lah ini lah. Ini bila orang kampung masuk gallery lah orang yeah, yeah. But I see that actually the problem is very much related to the artist and also gallery. Kenapa artis ya? Uh, because for me that artis, ya lah itu uh, artis bila buat kerja kan? Uh, of course when you put in gallery as a commercial product, right. it might be different. But when public Attack your work, so how you how uh, you you need to deal with that? Lah. Maybe most of the artists during the BMS were not prepared for that. Lah. I I think so lah. And normally they don't get that that number of audience coming to Balai. Unfortunately or fortunately during that period, how many on the top? Because of your own. Because of your own. But. Satu lagi, uh, Tok Kura told me that there is observation Actually, painting, right. they want to touch you They touch you all these installation uh, objects So maybe there is some kind of, I, I don't know, uh, dynamic there yeah. Why, I mean, for the fact that they kata The general public do not understand uh, They never touch you, know, touch the painting But the installation work Nah, uh, it's like a part, it's just like a playground. Yeah, yeah playground. Yeah. Uh, maybe because of yeah. I think uh, that that one comment, uh, maybe because now the mini museums uh, they have this interactive mm. kind of uh, showcases. So maybe the public thought that most of the work can be interacted with and all those things. Uh. But my comment is that I will never blame the public. So I would say that if artists uh, were to go forward. Then they have to take this into account that our public is so untouched that they can every time sell your work. So how you want to deal with your work next time? Mm -hmm. Maybe Thank that you. is my comment. No, 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 that's uh, yes. this interesting. Some my point to be uh, Maybe we can pass our uh, sort of like title. In the past, did anything like this ever happen again? Did you know about this event where there was like, yeah. Do you, do you want to sort of like share? In the past, it happens. Happened, but. What the artist will do, they make them the public understand what is his work, installation work. Can go like five months, five months, people will just I don't know, kind of work is bullshit, something like that. So, but five months is the kind of person who will make them understand how he write in with some stuff, so just call them. You know, uh, this is what the artist will do. I think the artist had to play to play to They have to make the public understand what why they did this kind of work, what kind of work, and what they are trying to tell or what kind of message they are trying to 
give the public. They must make the public understand. So even in solution, but for the, in the beginning, I don't understand. I say, hey, what? It's not. It's not an artwork. I thought. Because when I was still working in the then I asked my officers, no, no, this is part of art. It's Sunni. Completely Sunni, but you must learn to understand. So what I did, luckily I was working there, asked the artist. They start to explain. This is what artists must do. When people, the public surround, you don't surround the public, then this public will forget you. Mm. They simply throw away. Mm. So what do you when they surround? Okay, the surrounding is good for you. Does that mean you are missing something there? Yeah. You are not close to the public. I mean, the artwork is not close to the public. Just make them understand why they, why there is a group doing installation work. Why they are doing installation work. Why, uh, in which way they are trying to attract what they are telling. And how to understand installation work. This is what the artist must do when the public surround. You don't surround back. They are big force. Do you have something to add? There's someone who sort of like does our kind of but and someone who actually sort of like it's about sort of like remembering, it's about sort of like thinking about like this. Um, well I guess um yeah, because the time has changed now and I think the, the public are looking at more in, Instagramable works. They're not posing, they're not works to do not do some some So, seperti mana yang saya cakap tadi, he doesn't blame the public. Okay, that, that's true enough lah. So, about, uh, sebenarnya pihak yang mempamerkan uh, karya tersebut sebenarnya kena lah stand by kan dengan enough can be sitters ke ataupun ada explanation you know in order to condone the work from being manipulated or attacked by the <laughs> public lah um, tapi tengok juga kalau uh, some some uh, words may require that interactivity punya process <laughs> so so you I don't know it's, it's, it's up to the uh, apa ni management of the exhibition inilah untuk untuk to make sure that doesn't happen again in the future I think they were quite uh, dia tak bersedia waktu itu because they didn't expect you know like thousands of people come and spread pula kat BMS punya <laughs> section They're, they are all study by the nak tengok dia nak ada kan but at the same time I ask lah Jolly, sakit. So lah, I don't know. But then again, if you set that limitation, macam Ilan cakap, you just going to like pigeonhole your thing lah. Memang nak kena adakan that exclusivity kan. So how? I don't know. I also don't know. So, yeah. Hany, you just mentioned a really important word which is the Instagrammable yes. um, and as much as we might laugh at that that's a really serious thing now yes. and it's a it's a it's a kam -kam. it's a it's an interface that had that a very real interface now that I think museums the world over are dealing with this other realm that has become more and more dominant within marketing strategies uh, within people's Objectives of why they go to these spaces. So I mean, I don't know. I don't know enough. But I mean, I've been seeing some projects in Sabah that have been happening that are almost made for that Instagrammable moment, and they're super popular, and they engage. They're successful, really successful. Mm -hmm. And that to me is really. It, I don't speak about that in, in a demeaning way because I, I think that it's a really interesting way that you can use that. Um, as a as another uh, yeah 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 um, well not just as a carrot as a it's a it's a thing unto itself to as a as a channel um, so when you're talking about earlier about how reaching publics and things like that but the interfaces that happen uh, that's become a really real and interesting arena to 
considered, mm -hmm. also in, in, in terms of the installation of an exhibition? Yeah, of course, I, uh, of course, I think not everyone will get no. right the, no. what, what we're trying to present there. But at least out of fifteen thousand, that can not that but three four orang yang will return, yang akan datang semula untuk tengok other works, you know. But mm -hmm. I think it's just casting the net over. <laughs> Uh, and, and be prepared right, for it. I think it's a very important point to sort of highlight. We're, we're so used to living in our small little yeah. bubble that uh, sometimes when suddenly there's a surge of sort of like popularity, we don't know how to deal with this. Yes, yes. <laughs> yeah, a new volume. <laughs> uh, so I want to say this, right? Just add on to that. Um, Instagrammable, very important. and. For my part-time class, I actually added this bit where I teach them about lighting and teach them how to light for the person taking picture with their artwork. So that you're not lighting just for your artwork, but you're also lighting for the person who will be standing with the artwork. The person always has to be in the frame. Yeah, like how you would you imagine this person to be um, taking picture with your work? In a way, you are controlling that as well, um, where you are uh, allowing that person to stand, where's the best light, and best light for the person and the artwork. <laughs> so complicated. <Yeah. laughs> I can't even master the first thing. <laughs> yes. So, yeah. I'm a painter, but I don't understand installation art. But I have come across good installation art. And um, from the um, statements that the artists have put out, I can understand a bit of it. I believe that good installation art comes from the majority of the artists with a good intellect. They know how to create the installation. Now, my son was an installation artist too. And one of his best ones, mother, I can say one of the best ones, was done when he was 26 years old, 19, 1990 something, and it was called Elements. And he had a big fan going on and he explained his work and he came out in the uh, Newcastle newspaper in Australia. And the other one was form and function. And I thought it was good, you know. <clears throat> now as to art education to the public, I think in the 1980s, we had an art, um, Chong Tik Di, Chong, Chong what? Chong Tik Di, sometimes his name, I can't remember his name. <clears throat> he wrote in the star. <clears throat> It's either a weekly or a monthly um, contribution to the papers. And it was pretty good, so the, 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 the public was being educated, but he uh, migrated to Australia. Then we have Ui Kok Chiang, who wrote quite good articles, Star and the Straits Times, but now he doesn't do it. So at that period, I think a lot of the uh, local people, they learned a lot. So we do need a contributor to the media, the newspapers. So how are you going to encourage that? I think the Star does a really good job. Uh, they do almost uh, weekly coverage. Uh, and you find that actually, uh, it's surprising because a friend actually sort of like commented this, that actually in Malaysian newspaper you can find almost an art coverage almost every day. You can find what? You can find an art coverage almost, <coughs> almost every day. Right, so there will be reportage, but then on the weekends there will be at least like a certain <coughs> feature sort of like writing. It might not be art criticism, but at least, you know, it's constantly being sort of like promoted, right? And, uh, and that's strange given that uh, I, I think he lives in Melbourne and, and, and even there yeah, they don't have, uh, he thinks that they didn't have this much, much time. Um, I don't com know. Coming from the other side of Malaysia, right. The, the, the only press uh, that has been in my immediate world has been covered by Utusan Borneo. 
Uh, it is not covered by mainstream monandral papers, but it's by a body of papers. So media is a really interesting issue about these, these cross-regional uh, communications about what is happening. Um, Sorry? I get new news. No news. Um, and BFM have asked me to, to do various um, shows, but I'm retired from the world of speaking from Sabah, so I don't do those Malaysia Day, Madeka Day quote, you know, things anymore. I haven't for the last almost 10 years, I would say. Um, but it's so you have asked you to do a show? Uh, BFM oh, radio. Yeah. I mean, in terms of those Malaysiana shows oh. like Malaysia Day, in fact, they don't call this year. Last this year, I don't think anyone called because there's I don't do it. But you're they, still going to high school, right? But huh? You're still coming to high school. Right? What? You're still coming to high school, right? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. See, the subject interests me. But what I'm trying to say is that there's no media that has that I know of that is covering. Uh, 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 what's happening in KK is so active, except for local media mm -hmm. and some uh, international media where where it's been very, again, the world of Instagram, I'm thinking about Hong Yi's uh, Pillars of Sabah project had very, very wide coverage, but that was in, a, in the realm of the, the hipster media coverage. Uh, uh, what's it called? Uh, Malaysia Airlines magazine. Um, but in terms of uh, West Malaysian newspapers, I can't think of. Mm. Yeah. So it, uh, the media tends to focus on certain parts of the country. Right, right. But then you don't read our papers, we don't read your papers. Right. The West Malaysian newspapers arrive at 12 noon, FYI. So we don't read, we don't, I never read uh, some London newspaper. Does anyone have anything to resolve? contribute to the conversation? Uh, anyone has things to add or things to share at this point? If not, then maybe I can sort of like ask another question. Uh, actually, I wanted to ask about what is, uh, you know, some generic question about what you think of the future. But since this is, you know, in response to an uh, anime, maybe it's also to do some sort of like stop thinking, right, of the past. Uh, do you, as an artist, I mean, we're all trained in different sort of like uh, schools, we come from different kind of like backgrounds, we're exposed to different sort of like uh, art worlds and art communities and possibly even so have very different networks. But I guess uh, what Uncle Raja said is right. We, the fact that we're here together today is the fact uh, it is, it is because of we are like passionate about art, right? We, uh, there is a kind of like intensity to our sort of like commitment to this thing called art, however you want to define it. Um, but who, who is a sort of like a uh, figure or uh, uh, like, a, like a figure from the Malaysian art scene in the past that you look up to? And uh, maybe why? Uh, would you want to sort of like talk about that? Is that difficult? Is that a difficult question? And if you don't, if, it's, if you don't actually, uh, might be worth sort of like you know talking about why, why not? And then do you have to then sort of like figure out the scene by yourself? And do you yeah? The only thing of one figure is quite difficult. I mean, yeah. Like, oh, I mean, or you have a few. You mean? Yeah, I think a okay. lot. You of, can count. You can say a few too. I think a lot of artists or uh, even art movement inspire me. I mean like it's to refer to it at different points, I think. Mm -hmm. So it's quite hard to pick one. Okay, maybe some of the one or a few important feel that you think you think that you mean they've done any full work that you are inspired by. Or you look up to on some on some level. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not a yes or it's not a right or wrong sort of like answer. It's more like to prospect maybe to get people thinking about who are there, mm -hmm. what the people would look up to in their past. I think um, uh, when I just went back to Penang um, after KL, after in KL, I came across Kong Yu. Uh, we worked together in the Charleston Market Project. Okay, that's, this is Liu Kong Yu, right? Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. Where we did a installation, uh, where we did a sort of like engaging um, the market community together to be involved in the survey. This is at Pasar Charleston. And um, that time they were looking for photographers, so me and another photographer um, actually shoot some portraits 
and Gong Yu and Tae Si were sort of like the artistic director for that project. And so, um, in in contrary to like my my perception that photography exhibition is just like on on normal scale, but he actually uh, they make it into big size photography, mm -hmm. and that really engaged the community and uh, the, the market vendors feel proud of the market. That time, the Charleston market wasn't renovated yet; it was quite mm -hmm. dirty there. So um, and. And then like, I start to then only I started googling about Gong Yu, <laughs> and then I'm like oh okay um, his work how he interact and I think what inspired me also is how artists their work and also what they do um, for living and also what they do in their I mean not only artists as artwork but also artists as a person mm. their side project I think that's very a lot of artists here also inspire me a lot in that way. Uh, did, do you get a lot of support from Kung Yu as well, like, uh, in terms of your practice? Like, does, do you see him as a mentor? Or does he provide that kind of like, does he play a mentorship role to you? No, not really. I mean, it's friends. Like, secretly, it's friends. am I? <laughs> 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 not, not, yeah. I mean, we worked before in a few projects okay. when in Penang, so yeah. But not like, like, mentor, mentor. Right, right, right. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. Great. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Um, Kung Yu is one of my abangs also. <coughs> um, what, what I loved about Kung Yu when I first came at 94, I met him in about 94, was that he was one of the few people I knew who wasn't precious with the photograph surface. And the way he played with photography, I just found it so refreshing. So yeah, Kung Yu was one of them for me as well. Uh, Do you um, have kakaks then? Huh? Do you have kakaks? Rather than just have I have kaka uh, because just not in the car. I, I have, I have asking, kids, so, yeah. yeah. Who are your kaka? <laughs> yeah, I was asking who the gang was. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I have kaka Tina Rima in Sabah. Uh, she arrived in Sabah in 1949. She died one month short of being 100 years old, and her old land that's five acres is now uh, uh, artist residency space for artists, run by artists called Tamparumbi Living Art Center. And she and Datu Yaman Chaba Aga are the two people I spoke to before I went to art school. But why I love Tina Rima is her generosity to other artists. So she, she went out of her way for most of her life, for decades, to promote other artists. And I take that very seriously as part of an artist's um, responsibility, not even role, but responsibility is to always to take on what Tina Rima did and is always, always, always try and promote other artists. Um, I have to say Valentine. Uh, Valentine and I first worked together also in 94 uh, uh, in a show called And Three Come Home uh, with uh, Andrew Ching, who I think is at MIA. Um, and he's been a big part of my life as a gallerist and as a friend. Um, he drives people crazy, but he's been very important to me. Um, uh, people like George Chin, that you don't know here, his name, he's called Mingo, he's like the Sabalat. He was incarcerated under ISA 1969 to 1971. He was an architect, the only locally accredited Sabahan architect, I believe, under the British era, where the British recognized him as an architect. Or oh, one of two, huh? And then the Royal Institute. Something like that. British I'm not. I'm not precisely. I'm not confident in. in I, I say this with not confidence. Right, right. Uh, but he was a uh, painter, but also a uh, political cartoonist who did the newspaper front page once a week. I think it was Sabah Times at the time. Uh, but also he became a politician. But he was an artist. I'm good friends with his daughter Rosemary. And, but I like, I take from him um, that artists have multiple lives and that they're political creatures um, as well as uh, uh, social animals, as well as they operate in many mediums that like he was using in a newspaper. Someone like Lat to me is a hero of Malaysia uh, and I take a lot from Dr. Lat's work. Uh, Ismail Zain's show that I saw for the first time yesterday and just bought the catalog. Oh my god, it's brilliant. Uh, uh, the catalog, there's so, the exhibition itself, but in the catalog, there's so many works that I've never seen before. I am familiar, quite familiar with his writings and his practice, but 
uh, especially the catalog, there were so many images I had never seen before. And being interested in the digital matrix and the dot matrix histories, um, that's a sort of a direct lineage of interest. Uh, yeah, my, my Joe in the world of DIY punk rock. Dane side from the film world, but not like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's your alarm stuff. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Uncle, do you have any one? You want to sort of like, you want to share? Yes. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, Anna. Lupa pula. Just now we talk about how to be engaged with the public and the non-art people. I know, maybe like the, the, the only artist I can think of Right now is the late. Uh, the late is it? Is it? Teringat lah kerja kerja dia. Yang mana a lot of his works, installation and apa experimental work. Dia banyak engage dengan non art people, which is, I think, salah satu responsibility yang patut kita respect lah. Uh, and he brings the mundane object to to become, you know, to be appreciated as art. Kerja-kerja dia. Uh, for instance, dia punya cooking book. And it's just uh, biasa kalau kita tengok kan. Uh, tapi orang biasa boleh relate. Uh, uh, dia buat uh, research and study about the langkah suka recipe, for instance. They had to go into Patani and meet all the people there. For orang tua, kan? Uh, so to part of a very important process for uh, an artist, I suppose, you know, uh, not just to become a apa ni? visual maker or art maker, tetapi kena melalui proses tersebut dan kena banyak lagi engagement dengan Orang-orang biasa. So then orang-orang biasa ni pun dia tahu, oh inilah art. Uh, then, because through my conversation with the Islam, dia, orang-orang yang dia, for instance, uh, ada satu uh, work dia fridge tu. The fridges during the Singapore Binali. Dia engage dengan orang-orang yang live in Singapore. Just normal families yang, yang tak pernah masuk gallery, yang tak pernah understand about contemporary art. Yeah, and then Jumpa and Bora Bora and tu. And then after that, they they became aware of a, another new profession, yeah, another new bidang. So I think itu salah satu cara buat macam ada artis nak, uh, you know, untuk widen dia artistic scope lah, I guess. Community work, yeah. Perhaps it's practice is the it's a practice that actually encapsulates what I'm trying to say is that an artist is willing to go and engage rather than sort of like to himself, uh, just sort of like to the size or without actually sort of like doing the engaging work. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. It's, thanks for bringing him up. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I think one of the sort of like, um, I mean, I mean, you, you know so many big, big, big names. Yeah, you love you know all these big names in the past. Who is uh, uh, a few people that really inspire us. To me, I won't say a particular person. Yes. All the artists were working hard for those days. No, they were trying to attract them. No, no, see, they, you can call like the veteran artists, other big names like uh, Samuel Jamal, Anthony Lau, Kate Lau, and Suleiman was this uh, the past artist. Right? What the color I didn't remember his name. Uh, Famous artist. Um, Jolico. Jolico and Jolico is a current person. But he, he completely put that. But it's, it's life for art. It's life for art. And he can attack people easily. He's that kind of person. But to the artist, uh, it's current. Yes. <laughs> To me, all the artists are working hard to approach the public. For them, both days not easy. You know, you want to get money. To create a work, they need money to buy things like artwork, but, uh, painting, brush, brushes, and 
and uh, for them not easy even. So it was hard time for them. They can be a lecturer, a teacher, but still at that time the salary, you know, the payment is very less, very big. So it was a hard time for every artist. Even those days we call the pioneer artists, it's not easy for them to survive the art world. So they work hard. And today we are saying about them, they are very great. It's sort of, they work that, that way to attract the people. Everyone, you know, collectors, art lovers, artists, even some, you can see some of the artists are talking about um, past artists. So it's something, it's a award given by them to us. So we must keep on going. The artists must play a big role. I think it's, it's with the artist, not with the public. It is the artist. On that note, I think that's a very nice way to sort of like conclude our discussion. Uh, is there any sort of like um, final thoughts on the floor? Uh, no? Uh, so I think that's a really nice sort of like uh, a reflection to sort of like end our panel discussion. So please join me in thanking. Analyst, thank you so much. Uh,